Jan Feb Paleontology News, latest discoveries. Imagine uncovering a dinosaur right in your own backyard. This is the reality at South Dakota's Hell Creek Formation, where secrets buried for millions of years have recently come to light. Today's video explores the most thrilling paleontological discoveries made in January and February. Let's dig up these amazing fossils, new dinosaur remnants that are reshaping our understanding of prehistoric life. Starting off with an enormous new species called Busting Ori Titan Shiva. Busting Ori Titan Shiva, found in the province of Patagonia, Argentina, was a colossal dinosaur that roamed South America approximately 95 million years ago, during the Cenomenian stage of the late Crustaceous Epoch. The fossils of around four Busting Ori Titan Shiva individuals were collected, consisting of a relatively complete skeleton and three other incomplete specimens. Through phylogenetic analysis, scientists have classified it within the Lithostrotia group, a subgroup of Titanosaurus that was closely related to the Saltosaurus family. The Titanosaurus are recognized as among the largest land animals in Earth's history, with an estimated body mass of 67.3 metric tons. That's about the weight of six hippopotamuses. Bustlingo Titan Shiva is one of the most enormous known sauropod dinosaurs. The existence of Busting Ori Titan Shiva supports the hypothesis that gigantism, defined as evolving to sizes greater than 50 metric tons, occurred multiple times within the Eotitanosauria group. But there's more. Another groundbreaking discovery was made in Argentina a new genus and species of Titanosaurian sauropod dinosaur that shares similarities with Rubachiosaurids measuring over 15 meters in length, named in Owentu oslatus. The square-jawed species is part of the diverse group of long-necked sauropods known as Titanosaurus, which thrived from the late Jurassic period through to the end of the Cretaceous period. They compromise animals that range from the largest known terrestrial vertebrates to dwarfs no bigger than elephants. They are distinguished by their enormous bodies, long necks, and wide stances. Some species had osteoderms, or armored plates. As a result of their prolonged cervical or caudial series, proportionately small cranial to body ratio, and quadrupedal and gravitable stance, the sauropods developed a remarkable range of adaptions in gigantism, locomotion, defense, physiology, and feeding behaviors. The discovery of Inawentu oslatus came from the La Invernada site, located within the Bio de la Carpa formation in Argentina. Here, a particularly complete specimen was unearthed from river system deposits. The skeletal remains were found articulated, lying in a layer of large, reddish-covered mudstones, covered by a thin layer of sandy material about 30 centimeters thick, associated with deposits from river overbank flooding. The discovery of this dinosaur, along with the promise of future findings and diverse data sets, is expected to enhance our understanding of this particular group of Titanosaurus. Notably, in our Wentu Oslatus, Similar to the earlier Rebaccasaurid sauropods, exhibits distinct feeding adaptions, including a broad snout and a relatively short neck, which are likely traits shared by other members of this group. Next is the crocodile-like Triassic amphibian. A team of paleontologists from the Federal University of Pampa, the Federal University of the Sao Francisco Valley, Princeton University, and Harvard University have reported a new genus and species of Temnospondyli amphibian. Their analysis confirms the new genus's close relationship to the genus Benthosuchus, a small family of enormous amphibians which resemble crocodiles and its membership in the Tremotosaurian lineage. According to one of the paleontologists from Federal University of Pampa and his colleagues, the Benthosuchidae, belonging to the Stereospondyli group, was limited to the East European platform where this new species can be safely pinned at meaning that approximately 249 million years ago, during the early Triassic Epoch, the recently discovered Timo Spindley species swam and walked our planet Earth. The extinct amphibian, named Quatisuchus rosei, measured about 1.5 meters in length and could grow up to 2.5 meters in length. 
It was discovered in August 2022 in Rio Grande do Sol, Brazil's Sanga del Cabral Formation, a sedimentary rock formation. These animals were primarily aquatic, inhibiting lakes and rivers, but have no direct surviving relatives. The greatest mass extinction in the planet's history devastated the environment in which it lived. But Temniospondyli amphibians became abundant worldwide because they were animals adapted to conditions of high environmental stress. The paleontologists claimed this was the most varied group of primordial tetrapods ever discovered, with specimens on every continent. Their discovery aids in comprehending the effects of extinctions on our planet and how we can understand them now. Their multi-million year existence spans through geological epochs where they experienced multiple radiation pulses. So after the biggest mass extinction in history, how did the Temniospondylis manage to survive? Comment your theories below. In South Dakota, a groundbreaking discovery has been made with the identification of a new species of Ovaria Pretorosaurus named Eon Ophron Enfrenolis. This discovery was achieved through a collaborative efforts of paleontologists from Oklahoma State University, the University of Toronto, and the Royal Ontario Museum. Living between 68 and 66 million years ago, during the late Cretaceous Epoch, Eonophron infernalis adds to a diverse catalog of ancient life that once thrived in what is now the United States. The species' fossilized remains were extracted from South Dakota's Hell Creek formation exposures, and it was first identified as a family of dinosaurs known as Cain agonothedia. Bird-like dinosaurs with long legs, short tails, and toothless beaks. It's believed that Hell Creek's formation ecosystems may have supported up to three different Cain agonothid species. Still, as in other areas, it is difficult to sort through the fragmented fossil records and determine which species belong to which taxidermic categories. Like modern birds, these dinosaurs were covered in complex feathers according to direct fossil evidence and inferred evidence. Its diet is up for question though. Despite its intimidating nickname, it was an omnivore that consumed both tiny animals and plant matter. Researchers are particularly excited about what the study of its bones reveals about its growth and life changes. Contrary to expectations of finding evidence of rapid juvenile growth, analysis of bone cross-sections indicated that the dinosaur was nearing adult size, with growth lines spaced closer together. This revelation identifies Eonophron infernalis as an adult of a previously unknown species, therefore extending the diversity and ecology of Cain agnathid dinosaurs throughout the Cretaceous epoch, suggesting that the diversity in Laurasia remained largely stable between 84 and 66 million years ago. These dinosaurs remained successful components of Laurasian ecosystems until the end of the Cretaceous extinction. But how can you identify new species? Well, to ascertain Eonophron infernalis's place within the family, an extensive comparison was conducted with other family members using this new information. Since it is now known that more Canyon Agathus dinosaurs were in Western North America at the time, it motivated the investigation of other bones previously thought to be as new dinosaurs. This discovery suggests that at the end of the Cretaceous, the diversity of their dinosaur group was actually not declining. These fossils demonstrate that new species are still yet to be discovered. And the Titanosaurus family continues growing. A new genus and species of Titanosaurian sauropod dinosaur, Shangxi Titan ganuazensis, has been unearthed in China, shedding light on the diverse group of dinosaurs that roamed the Earth during the Cretaceous period. Living between 72 and 66 million years ago, in what is now Guangzhou City, Shangxi Province, within the Nanshan Formation near Tangko Town, the specimen consists of an incomplete skeleton, including several cervical and dorsal ribs and seven cervical and anterior dorsal vertebrae. Shangxi Titan ganuazensis adds to the diversity of the Titanosauria group, a well-known clade of sauropod dinosaurs characterized by their massive size and long necks. This particular species stands out among the Asian Titanosaurus due to its unique anatomical features, 
such as deeply bifurcated posterior, cervical, and anterior dorsal neural spines and dorsoventrically compressed posterior, cervical, and anterior dorsal centra. These distinct traits help differentiate Shangxi Titan Ganuazensis from other members of its group and contribute to our understanding of the diversity within Titanosauria. This discovery marks the second sauropod species identified within the Nangshan Formation, a geological formation dating back to the late Cretaceous period. The formation is known for its extensive sequence of red mudstones, sandstones, and conglomerates, providing a rich context for the dinosaur's habitat. Today we've unearthed the latest paleontological discoveries highlighting the enormous busting Ori Titan Shiva in South America, the intriguing Eon Eofron Infernalis in South Dakota, and the crocodile-like Quati Suchas Rosea from Brazil. Each of these finds significantly enriches our understanding of Earth's ancient inhabitants, showcasing the incredible diversity and evolutionary paths of these prehistoric giants. Follow Primitive History for more insights into our planet's past.